I'm gonna show you guys how to rebuild an M20 B25 head from the ground up with all stock internals. I'm not, not building a really expensive one because they just keep blowing up anyways. This time it wasn't really my fault or the, a tune's fault or anything like that. It was actually Sinel's fault. What happened was when I went to have the head machined, I needed some studs taken out and they drilled the studs out. The only problem is they went through all my coolant jackets in the head so it leaks all my coolant out of all the studs and I even used the thread sealant stuff that they use on the old Ford engines. Still leaks a ton and that actually caused the back of the head to crack and it was dumping coolant in my last cylinder. But let's get into it. Here we have a pretty much empty head. I already put in the valve stem seals, but I'm gonna show you how to do those first before I start doing anything else. So first thing you wanna do is go online and order some new valve stem seals. You might as well do them while it's out of the car and you don't have to do it later down the road if it smokes like a chimney. All right, so let me flip this thing over to show you guys how clean Ian got it. Look at that. Good job, buddy. I know I keep them around for a reason. We got Sam hanging out. Buddy! The easiest way to take the old ones out are you just get these thin needle nose vice grip type thing and you squeeze them not too hard, just enough where they like bend a little bit. And then you wiggle them and they'll come right out. Really easy. Um, I'm not gonna take the new ones out to show you guys how they come out because you pretty much ruin them. As for installing them, it's pretty simple. They make a special tool to do it. But honestly, all you need is an 11 millimeter socket and extension. And all I do is I, it fits perfectly over this and it doesn't hurt the rubber at all. It goes right over the rubber and just barely sits right on that metal lip piece at the bottom. With even pressure, you just push them on like that, give it a little bit of a wiggle and they slide right on. Now I'm gonna show you guys how to put in the valves. First, you need to pet your dog. First things first is you grab one of these, which is a valve spring compressor. You can find this tool in the description below. I will link it to you, or you can steal it out of your dad's toolbox. All right, this is kind of hard to do holding a camera and filming. Luckily, my girlfriend just showed up, so Lexi can help me film. Lexi. Hi. Can you help me film this? Sure. Thank you. Recording. Cool. We're gonna grab our springs in the right order. It probably doesn't matter. I like to keep them in the same order as the valves. So I'm gonna put this guy over here on top of your valve stem. Then you take your giant C-clamp that you stole from your dad when he wasn't looking and you put it on your spring and you wanna line up the foot with the actual valve at the bottom and try not to score up your flat surface on the head. Then you give it a good squeeze like that <gasps> and it should lock in be careful you don't slide all the way off like mine almost did there we go then clamp it now you take your valve stem spring locker thing I guess that's what we'll, we'll call it today and it goes right in the grooves above the valve I like to leave a thin coating of oil on it so that way it gives it like a suction effect and they won't fall off just like that they're on there now slowly release the pressure and you have just installed a valve. Pretty easy. Alright guys, so I got my cool headset thing on so you guys can see how I do it. Um, all the intake valves are actually already in. I just put those in so now we're going to go through and do all the exhaust valves. So it's the exact same thing, we're going to use the uh, clamp. Now these aren't new valves, obviously when you put new valves in it, they're going to be a lot cleaner. But the reason I'm not doing new valves is because I don't want to wait. There's nothing wrong with these valves other than being dirty. And then if I change out with new valves, I'm going to have to change the valve stem guides as well, which are what actually hold on your valve stem seal. Because if it's worn in there and it's not worn at all on the new ones, it's going to end up wearing way worse than just putting the old one back in. So slide this guy in here like that and the valve stem seal will actually hold it in there so it's not going to fall out and don't forget to lube them up a little bit oh gross that was nasty so lube up your valve stem slide this guy right in you want a nice thin coating on there that way it doesn't hit metal on metal without kind of a smooth surface to glide on next it's all just very very repetitive now you don't need much of this stuff 
You don't want to overdo it. It won't hurt, it's just kind of a waste. It might make it smoke a little bit on startup, but other than that, I don't really think there'd be an issue. Now we're going to start putting the springs in. Again, it's going to be the same on the intake and the exhaust sides because they're all the same springs. Just in case you guys missed this, you have a flat washer goes here on the bottom. Then you have your inner spring. Then you have your outer spring. And then you have your valve seat, which that will get compressed. You want to have it opposite so you can actually swing it under there. Ooh. Got him there. And there. We got the first exhaust one in. So now I'm going to go ahead and speed through the rest of them. They're all done the same exact way. Alright, so the next step is you want to prep the head for the cam. So what we're going to do is take our assembly lube. This will be in the link in the description. Or you can just run out anywhere you want. But use a good amount. I mean, it's not going to hurt anything. And you're going to go and you're going to lube up all these machined bearing parts. I don't know what they're called. They're not a bearing because bearings don't go in them. They just kind of float, which is strange that the cam doesn't have a bearing. So just use a good amount. Make sure it's clean. You don't want to feel a bunch of sand in there because you're not going to have a good time. It will just eat up your cam and then you'll be doing this all over again. So make sure it's nice and clean, lubed up a lot. So just go down each one. Another thing you want to look for if you are rebuilding your head that you already had, you want to make sure that there's not really deep cuts in any of these machine parts. Because if you get a really bad groove in there, it's going to tear apart your cam. Then that's going to send metal shavings all throughout your whole head. Eventually, it's going to go into your oil and then that's going to send it to the rest of your motor and you don't want that. Now we're going to go over to our cam and we're going to do the same thing. Now just very carefully, try not to touch that much just take your time you're not in a rush race season might not even be happening this year and your cam is officially in and it should be able to spin pretty freely see we're gonna start putting in the rockers and the rocker shafts this is what your rockers ride on and this is where you're gonna get your oil flowing through the oil is gonna seep out of each one of these right underneath the rockers so that way they don't you know burn up and bad things happen the key is right here if you can see it you want to make sure it lines up with this spot which is where your key is going to sit right in here so it's going to go basically like this now you want to make sure that the big holes are going to line up with the big holes in the actual head or you're not going to get oil flow and that is what will kill your engine Gonna do the same thing that we did with the cam. We're gonna lube up these little holes where it goes, and then we'll lube up the actual rocker shaft itself, and you'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, so now we're gonna start taking our rockers, and we're gonna lube up the inside and the foot, which is this guy right here. So lube up in here, lube up the rocker foot. If you want, you can do the roller too. Just helps. Your foot is gonna go on the cam side, and the roller is gonna go on the valve side. So what this does is when the lobe hits the foot, it presses down and opens the valve. And we're gonna adjust this too, but we don't do that until after. So just slide this guy a little bit out, have him like this, go through, one rocker's on. Grab another one. And like that, we got, we got two. Also, inspect all your rockers for excessive wear or damage because you do want to replace those if they're really badly worn. Which, see how it's kind of got flat spot, but it's not terrible? See, you can see the different kind of angles to it. This one is not terrible. It's not going to really affect you. But I'll show you what a bad one actually looks like. So this is what a bad one looks like. Yeah, this is from... A snap timing belt so you definitely want to replace that too while you're in here it's just easier to do everything's already apart and you don't want this to happen to your new head now this is another bad one this is a heavy-duty Ireland engineering one and as you can see the foot 
is so flat at the end, it should not curve like that. That's really, really bad. And that actually what is what blew up my first head. Okay, now line that key up there. See where it lines up with that little notch and the little notch here. Then do the same thing on the other side, the exact way that we did this. Have them all loose so you can move them all so you don't want them binding up on the cam. I don't know why he's barking. All right, so all the rockers are in, all the rocker shafts are in. My dog's barking, but um, now I'm gonna show you guys how to line up the rockers on the cam and we'll be pretty much done. So now what we're gonna do is grab your cam seal, which I got a bunch of them. This one seems very flat, so I think I'm gonna replace it. You kinda want a little bit of a raise out of it because if your cam seal leaks, it is horrible. And I've had that happen to me for a long time and I eventually had to get a new head because what happened was the machine shop wanted to clean up this little spot in here, but they made it too big that the O-ring wouldn't seat right in there and all the oil pressure from my head would leak out of here and it would be like a, a whole quart of oil in about 10 minutes. It was awful. This is a 10 millimeter bolt. So now we're gonna get our key and we're gonna make sure it lines up in here so these don't move around while we move the rockers around. What I do is I take one shop rag and I have these pliers and all I'm gonna do, put this on the rocker shaft so it protects when you use your pliers. Don't really crank onto it, you just need enough to move it so this key will line up with that hole on both sides. So you just go like this, so that lines up about there now let's do the other one. Now you should be able to just tap it in there very lightly. You don't really need something like this, but this is what I have. Just tap, 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 there you go. Now it's in. So that's what you're gonna do. Of all the ones that you can over the valves and over the cam at the same time. And then you're gonna take these which are your retainer clips, they keep your rockers where they're supposed to be so they're not sliding around all over the engine bay doing their own thing. And what you're gonna find is these lines in here, a little groove, this is gonna sit right in here like this, and then you're gonna press on top of it like this. And it's pretty, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. One rocker is completely ready to roll on the camshaft. And now you can do the other one. Unfortunately, they're not all this easy. And you're gonna figure that out as we get further in this. So now we reach our first one that's a pain in the ass. You can't get this rocker on the valve and you can't get it on the actual cam itself. So what we're gonna have to do is turn the cam until this lobe in here is down enough to get the rocker on top of the cam and the valve. So we're gonna go put on our cam gear. Boom. So not everybody's cam nut is the same. This one is a E12 bit, and I've had ones that are the opposite. It's an E12 bit, but it's inverted. And then I've had other ones that are different from that, and I don't remember, but you're gonna put this guy here. Again, you can't mess it up, you'll feel it lock in. Now you just thread your E12 socket on there. Just tighten it up a little bit so it's not gonna loosen up. Hold this. Now you're gonna rotate it, the cam, see? Now I can actually get the valve on top of the cam. And I can do this one too. Again, it's not rocket sized. It's not that difficult. Just take your time. Don't overthink things. And no reason to rush. So officially, you have a fully put together head done correctly now. All right, the final step is we have to adjust your rockers and I'm gonna grab my feeler gauge and show you guys how to do it. And it's not that hard to do, but if you don't do it right and take your time, it can be catastrophic or even worse, you'll make a lot less horsepower. So what we're gonna need is 10 millimeter wrench, a small enough Allen key to get into your roller. 
and a feeler gauge. Um, you want these adjusted to cold, by the way, 0 0.010 or 254 millimeters. What I'm going to do is I like to bend this into like, I don't know, just enough to get it in there so that way it's easy. So pick how you want to bend it. I'm going to probably a little bit more. So get some oil. We're going to put a little bit on the feeler gauge. And what we're going to be looking for is almost like a peanut butter type drag. It should feel like peanut butter. I don't know how if that really makes sense, but that's what you're going to be looking for. And don't, don't loosen these too much because you want a little bit of resistance on the roller. Otherwise, it's going to be a pain in the butt. You're just going to be too loose and just float around. Just enough. Give you a little bit of drag. And you want each rocker to not have any pressure on them. So what you're gonna have to do is turn the cam over until each one is loose. That is pretty close. See how it grabs, but it also has a good amount of drag to it? That's what you want. So now I'm gonna snug up this 10 millimeter wrench, just enough so the rocker is not gonna move. Just to be sure, check it again. Yep, that's pretty good, that's what you want. So that's how you adjust your rockers. So now. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go down one side at a time. This next guy has pressure on him, so I'm gonna have to rotate the cam so there's no pressure. And you wanna make sure that the cam is completely on the other side. Like you need the cam lobe to be completely facing down when you adjust your rocker. That's about what we want. We got a good amount of drag on that. That one is all set too. Snug them up. All right, next one. So now that I showed you guys how to do it, I'm going to speed through the rest on my own, then the head's ready to go on the car. Alright guys, so that's how to rebuild an M20885 head from start to finish. I hope you guys liked it. I hope it helped you guys out a lot. Um, please post in the comments any questions. Uh, everything is in the description that you need for this job. You can just click and order it. It makes it really easy for you guys. Please like, subscribe, and thanks for watching, guys. See you at the track.